So there's some bad news and some good news. The bad news is for most of calculus, you're gonna be taking derivatives. The good news is, while it sounds like you might be taking a lot of these limits of indeterminate forms, we're actually gonna be able to cook up a whole bunch of recipes for computing most of the functions that we care about. So how is this gonna work? It's gonna be a lot like we did for limits. We're gonna develop how to compute these derivatives for a lot of our base cases. Then we'll have some rules that let's combine all our base cases. And then it's just gonna be a matter of memorizing the rules for where things are a little bit more complicated. So let's start by developing our base cases. Our first base case is gonna be the constant functions. Here our rule is gonna be my function f of x is constant, meaning no matter what I put in, a fixed number comes out, then the derivative of that function at any point is gonna be equal to zero. From the picture, this makes sense. If I have a constant function, its graph is gonna be a horizontal line going through y equal to that constant c. The best fitting line to that line is the line itself, and since it's horizontal, its slope is gonna be equal to zero. If I wanna do it mechanically using our definition, we're gonna look at the limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. But no, no matter what we put into f, that constant c comes out. So that limit's gonna be c minus c over h or zero over h. And since as long as we're off of zero, zero over h is equal to zero, that limit's gonna be equal to zero. So remember, when I take the limit, I ignore the actual point where we're taking the limit at. So zero over h is never gonna be zero over zero. So that's it for constant functions. Now if you note, our answer here didn't depend on x. That's usually not gonna be the case. Now let's take a look at f of x equal to x to a power, where our power is a positive integer. The rule's gonna be, if I have x to the n, that n comes down, and then we take our exponent and subtract one off of it. So the derivative of x to the n is gonna be n times x to the n minus one. Now, let's take a look at some special cases. If I have the function x, that's a straight line. That's the line with slope equal to one. So that says the derivative of x is equal to one. Does that agree with the function? Well, x is equal to x to the one, so the rule says bring the one down, and that's gonna be x to the one minus one, which is x to the zero. Anything to the zero power is equal to one, so the derivative is equal to one when I use the formula. We've already seen for f of x equal to x squared, the derivative is gonna be equal to two x. Using our formula, what do we have? I have x squared, I bring the two down, and then I multiply by x to the two minus one, which is x to the one, which is just x, so I get two x. So that agrees with our formula. Let's try something new. Let's do x cubed. I set up my limit gadget. Okay, we're gonna take our f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So f of x plus h is gonna be x plus h cubed. To figure out your x plus h cubed, you can either multiply it out or you can use your binomial theorem or you can use Pascal's triangle. Either way, what you're gonna get is x plus cubed plus three x squared h plus three x h squared plus h cubed. You're gonna subtract off of x, which is gonna be x cubed. So we're just gonna be left with the middle stuff, which is gonna be three x squared h plus three x h squared plus h cubed all over h. h is gonna divide into that, giving you three x squared plus three x h plus h squared. Take the limit as h goes to zero. That's just gonna leave me with the three x squared. And you know that agrees with the formula. I have x cubed, bring down three, and then I have x three minus one, which is x squared. Let's take a look at the general case. If our function is f of x equal to x to the nth power, we're gonna to have to figure out how to work with x plus h raised to the nth power. To do that, we're to pull out the binomial theorem. And I really don't need the whole entire theorem, I just need to know what the first three terms are doing. So x plus h raised to the n is gonna be 
x to the n plus n times x to the n minus 1 times h. And then what's going to happen beyond that? Everything is going to be something times h squared. You'll actually have powers that are going to be larger than h as you move out, but we really need to factor out the h squared piece. So let's see what happens when we put it into our limit definition. I have limit h going to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So I'm going to have this gadget we just pulled out from the binomial theorem. We're going to subtract x to the n off that, and then we're going to divide by h. So let's take a look at what happens. The x raised to the nth power terms go away. I'm going to have n x to the n minus 1. Okay, the h's are going to cancel there, plus h times whatever that stuff that's developing in the binomial theorem turns out to be. So I let the limit of h go to 0. The extraneous stuff is going to get thrown out to 0, and I'm just going to be left with n times x to the n minus 1, which is our power rule. So we'll get a lot of mileage out of this in a little bit. Let's go back to an example just to remind ourselves of why we're doing this. So consider the problem. I want to find the equation of the tangent line to f of x equal to x raised to the fifth power at the point x equal to 1. And then we'll use that to approximate f of 0.9 or 0.9 to the fifth power. So what do I need to do? I start out by just writing down the equation of a line, y minus y0 equals m x minus x0. I need a point and a slope. My point's just going to be given by putting 1 into the function, so I'll get 1 comma 1. Then our slope's just going to be given by take the derivative, evaluate at 1. So my power rule says if I have x to the fifth, I pull the 5 down, multiply by x times 5 minus 1. So it's going to give me x to the 4 times 5. I put a 1 in there, and so the slope of my tangent line is going to be equal to 5. Now we're looking at the line y minus 1 equal to 5 x minus 1, and I can push the 1 to the other side. So now let's do our approximation. I'm going to put 0.9 into my equation. That's going to give me 1 plus 5 times 0.9 minus 1. It's going to give me a minus 0.1 times 5, which gives me minus a half, plus 1, and that's going to give me a half. I check that against the actual answer. The actual answer is going to be 0.5905 putting that into the calculator. Okay, to see if this makes sense, what I can do is I could check the graph of this. Okay, we don't need a grade sketch. All I want to do is check that if I draw my tangent line in at x equal to 1. You'll notice that the tangent line is going to be underneath the graph when I'm at 0.9. So that's going to mean the actual estimate that we have is going to be an underestimate. And that's for sure. If I'm getting 0.5, that's underestimating 0.5905.